Alright, so here I am sitting down to write my field response journal part two. So I had the opportunity to teach a lesson to uh, some eighth grade students this past week about the joys of going to college. So I'm going to write about that experience in this field response journal part two. So the first uh, question, and you're welcome to structure your response this way by just kind of copying and pasting in and then responding, or you can just write the paper outright, whatever you'd prefer. But the first question in part two is just about describing the students that were in the class. Um, so I would talk about things like these were eighth graders, um, I was in their CTE class, uh, so they were sitting at computers. Uh, I was working specifically at uh, Orem Junior High, and then I also did presentations at uh, another middle school, Centennial Middle School in Provo District. Um, so we had quite a bit of cultural diversity. Uh, I was also warned ahead of time that I had some students with ADHD um, and Asperger's that I would be working with and that, you know, could potentially cause some interruptions and things like that. So I would write a couple of sentences about those characteristics of these students. Now the next part of this question asks about how I determined my students' readiness, interests, or learning preferences. Well, guess what? In this particular case, I didn't know the students at all. You guys have been lucky in that you have had an opportunity to sit and interact with or at least watch these students over the last couple of months, so you may know your students a little bit better. But basically, I would say in this that, you know, this was my first time interacting with these students. Therefore, I didn't really know much about them at all. So I just had to kind of assume that they would be typical junior high school students who liked movies, um, who were perhaps starting to get interested in college but maybe didn't know if they were really going to go, um, and that there would probably be quite a few visual learners and a few kinesthetic learners uh, in the class. So, you know, I, I kind of just have to make assumptions in this part. You might really already understand your students' readiness levels, their zones of proximal development. You might know more about their interests and the kinds of things that this particular group of students likes, or you may know about their learning styles and preferences better than I knew these students. All right, so then I'd finish this paragraph up by talking about how I planned to differentiate the lesson. And this particular lesson was planned for me, but there was some differentiation built in. So I used a lot of visuals in the presentation to cater to my visual learners. I had some students, this is something I added, um, get up and interact with me for the kinesthetic learners. Lots of discussion and questions for the visual, or I mean for the verbal learners. There we go. And um, we also had some kind of reflecting things, some questions that they just kind of reflected on. I could talk about that. Um, I also had some analogies to a popular movie that they were aware of, so that helped as far as interest as well. All right, so I would write a paragraph that included those elements. Then I need to go back and it, go in and actually analyze the lesson that I taught. So I used, um, I'm going to say that I used the cognitivist theory. So I would specifically mention that I used cognitivism to teach my lesson. And then I would start to explain how I did that. So I had an analogy. That's a strategy that comes from cognitivism um, to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I got their attention, that's another big concept from cognitivism, using pizza, money, all kinds of different little techniques. I kept the information in their working memory by having lots of examples, discussion, and questions. And then I tried to get them to encode this information to long-term memory. Through questions and prompts, and um, showing them some websites to go to to kind of do some more work on their own. So that would be elaboration, having them do further work on their own. So once I've talked about the students and how I plan to differentiate, 
and I've explained how I used a theory to teach my lesson and incorporating numerous strategies and vocabulary terms from that theory in my explanation. And of course this would all be in prose, not just bullet points as I've done here. I need to come in and do the reflection. And again, this is kind of the most important piece of it because this is really where you say whether or not this theory worked well, how you felt using it, and if this is something you want to keep doing in the future. So I could talk about how, you know, one class that I taught this to was really participatory and the other was not. So I could talk about participation, if I can spell it right. There we go. I could talk about um, how particular activities went. So I had one where a student had to come up and pretend she was my employee and I paid her a certain amount of money. Or I had another student come up and I showed them how much they would get for scholarships. So those are some activities that I did. So I could kind of talk about how those went, what went well, what didn't. That's pretty straightforward. But now we're going to talk about did the theory you chose work well for these students? Why or why not? How might using another theory have improved the lesson or made it less effective? And were your differentiation efforts effective? Why or why not? Would you teach the same lesson in the same way in your future classes? Why or why not? And again, paying particular attention to the theory you selected. So, I above, in question two, said that I used cognitivism to teach that lesson. I felt really comfortable using this theory. So I could talk about that, that I felt like, um, you know, it matched my personality well, that the techniques I used to get their attention were really good, um, that we definitely kept it in working memory, I could tell that they were thinking about the issues, we had good discussion, things like that. I could also talk about that analogy and my students' responses to it. So the students responded well to the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory analogy. They'd seen that movie and it really helped them to understand how getting more skills when they went to college, which is what I was talking about, would result in them getting better jobs and having more opportunities and a better quality of life later on. So I would talk about that too. Now, I could say something like, behaviorism might have worked, right? So maybe if I'd thrown out candy, I would have had more participation in the lesson, or I could have gotten them to answer more, or to think about things in a different way. Um, I could also talk about how social cognitivism played a role. Because one of the things that I was doing there was modeling how college can help you be more successful. So as a woman, I chose to go to college to be a role model for my children. I have kids, I'm still a mom, and I've got a good education. This is something that I'm trying to convey because we have a problem here in Utah with um, girls not going to college. So that was part of what I was doing too, was social cognitivism and modeling. So I could talk about that a little bit. I definitely didn't use constructivism in this lesson because I wasn't having the kids like actively explore and discover things on their own. So I could say, you know, I think cognitivism worked really well. Here's why. Behaviorism could have worked if I'd thrown in some reinforcement. And I believe I was probably using a little social cognitivism too. Would I teach this lesson in the same way in the future? Probably. Now, if this were my own class, I might throw in some constructivism because I kind of lean that way. So I would have allowed students, if I'd had more time, to go out and explore how much people with certain careers make, for example. Um, I might have had them go out and explore how much the college they want to go to costs. Instead, in this presentation, I just had that as part of the presentation, how much certain professions make, how much certain colleges cost, so that they could see that outright. Okay? My differentiation seems to go well. But I would have liked to have differentiated more for readiness. So students who already knew what college they wanted to go to, I would have wanted them to spend some time looking at that. And I didn't have the opportunity to do that in this lesson. All right, so that's what I want you to do with Field Response Journal Part 2. Tell me about the students and your differentiation. Use a theory to teach a lesson and reflect on your implementation of that theory. should take you about a page. Good luck!